So this section, I'm going to talk about how uh, this osmotic pressure equation can be used, and then how this can be used to characterize number average molecular weight. This is an equation that uh, I am going to talk about today. And the other equation that is shown up on the other side, this is an equation for light scattering experiment. So there is a kind of awful similarity between these two. This is your x, y-axis, and the concentration is chosen your x-axis. So that's here too. Now uh, this is a concentration, and this quantity is related to light scattering quantity uh, in the experiment later today. So today I'm going to more focus on, I'm going to just talk about uh, how to use this equation. And so uh, you might recall from the previous lecture, I we started our calculation based on the, the concentration, which is we're going to see, and then versus um, how that's going to be related to uh, the molecular weight. And that's a gram per milliliter. Okay, so this is a gram per mole quantities. And then we have I've shown you the from the equation derivation, I've shown you the, showing you that pi over R T is uh, C over M. Okay. So uh, from this equation, we this equation was essentially expanded at uh, one more uh, parameter uh, for putting in this uh, expansion. This is what we call the virial expansion. And then pers my perspective now is, okay, this is a concentration, and this quantity is a functional concentration, and then I would like to call that as a proportional quantities. So this y quantity, pi over rt, must be a 1 over m times c. And then I'm going to have a second order inclusion, and so on. So this is a more polynomial expansion of first orders and second order and multiple order. And I'm going to say this is a neg I'm going to make this one neglected. So this equation now uh, simplified. And then if I rearrange this equation, pi over RT is MC over M BC square. And now this one is finally taking the form that the osmotic pressure equation. So pi over CRT is a common choice. So that your y-intercept is a 1 over M. And then your the plot that you have, the slope term here is B, and the y-intercept is 1 over M. And when you put x versus pi over CRT. This one shows the, an example of uh, the actual result when people do the experiment. So when you dissolve the polystyrene, this is actually a very well-known system where the Professor Paul Flory uh, has doing the experiment. Paul Flory actually won the Nobel Prize in establishing this concept about um, uh, polymer solution thermodynamics and so on in the, in the 70s. And his favorite system is actually polystyrene dissolved in cyclohexane. As you can see, uh, polystyrene has a benzene group and the cyclohexane do not. So it has a nice uh, light scattering contrast, and the polystyrene can be made in a different molecular weight. So uh, they can uh, essentially dissolve this one and trying to see, understand how we can understand the, uh, I guess, uh, the dependence on pi over CRT and then of a concentration. So if this is a experiment that has been performed actually later by the Japanese scientists. And they, they find out at 
some particular concentration or particular temperature. This is a temperature 34.5 degrees C. You will see that um, the change in the temperature will give to uh, somewhat uh, the slope of a zero. Okay, but at a higher temperature than this 35 degrees C, this is an example of 50 degrees C, and you got a positive slope. And then, as the equation suggested, the slope here is the B, and B value is positive, and the B value is is a zero. And then, if you you can push a little bit to the to this experiment by doing the experiment such as a 20 degree C, that is a case where the slope is a negative. So now we have uh, ways to describe uh, this. Uh, Schematic. I'm going to draw the schematic diagram to, to explain it to you one more. So when you plot your data, C versus pi over CRT, first understand that and this is essentially 1 over inverse molecular weight. So mole per gram is a unit that we'll see. Gram per milliliter is what you're going to have. And then if you have done the, uh, you can change the temperature, for example, and typical data is, because we want to dissolve the polymers, and it can dissolve, this is the data, okay? So this is a point where you're going to see 1 over M, and later I'm going to show you actually 1 over M is 1 over MN, number average molecular weight for polydispersed sample. So, uh, as you lower your temperature, the slope is gets lower and lower. At some point, at this uh, sort of the interesting temperature, this is a case when your B value is zero, right? So your concentration change, whether you put polymers or not, there is no uh, rise in the uh, the the osmotic pressure more than just linearly proportional. And so this is all in the polymer cases, that is called the theta state. And this is the term by Flory's theta state temperatures by Professor Paul Flory. Okay. So this is a theta state where essentially polymer chains and solvent chains do not discriminate each other. And that's a very important thermodynamic state in solution. And that is behave polymer chains has the same uh, Thermal uh, sizes as in the melt state, but most cases polymer chains do exist as something looks like <laughs> positive slope, and then this is a case where you have a B is bigger than zero, and this is a good solvent. Okay, so and then uh, so here I have given you an example of utilities of these two from the osmotic pressure experiment we can get two important quantity number average molecular weight and uh, second burial constant as a measure of solvent quantities and so that's a, a important step uh, so I want to uh, show it to you how what how this extrapolation of this quantity when concentration goes to zero when you have, and that actually average out to the, mm, the, the number average molecular weight. So let's, let's see. So do you remember pi over RT was C over M? So let's, let's break that into the term that uh, essentially, okay, pi is a contribution of RT C over M. And when you have polymers are polydispersed, and then this term is going to be is a summation of C I M I, right? For whole entire molecular weight. So that's the uh, what what this equation for polydisperse, right? So this is uh, when do things are polydisperse, and I guess I want to use this uh, 
see, once again, I want to remind you, this is a concentration in a unit of mass per volume, right? You can choose a different unit of volume, but essentially it's a mass per volume. Okay, so we have we have this definition, and then the now, let's see uh, how what this. Let me be most clear about Ci is concentration, which is a gram per milliliter, which is a mass per volume uh, of something with an imer, right? And And then the now we are going to say, okay, we want to know when the limit of concentration goes to zero, pi over CRT. So this one, now I am getting into the equation. Pi is here. More, so it's a pi for poly per sample is there. It's actually pi over RT, so I, I want to kind of lump it up, so pi over RT into this term, and then there is a 1 over C, right? So therefore, I can simply write it as pi over RT divided by C, and as this one shows from the equation above, C, I, M, I. And the bottom is just a combination of all different mass contribution from the different MERS, right? So this is a, what this looks like. And if you re recall, uh, this is essentially uh, here we are talking about CI divided by CI, CI, MI. And that's a total mass. And this term is total number of molecules, right? So therefore, this term now is 1 over mn. So uh, here I have shown you that the Doing the experiment for polydisperse sample, you will get end up getting the number average molecular weight.